Hi everybody, this is Mr. Ricky Stevens. I can't really show my face right now because I have been scarred by my enemies. Alright, now nah, I'm just kidding. And I'm also not going to be kidding around this much because this is going to be more of a, of a tutorial video. Uh, it's something I wanted to be doing for a while. I wanted to really showcase my skills as an artist. Um, you know, I've, recently, I've just mostly been showing my skills as sort of a mid-core gamer, I would say. You know, and um, showcasing you know my personality. And um, I'm really starting to get. I wanted to get more into using my art as a way of communication or import it more into my videos. So right now, this is something I've been doing. Wanting uh, this is a concept of what I've been doing wanted to do for a while um, ever since I really have started to be upgrading my skills and getting better at art I really wanted to you know showcase how I've been doing because I believe that art is a process I believe that it is a very long tedious task that will take years to master and while it take while you are mastering it you will learn different styles different skills um, different um, just ways of of showing or creating imagery and to help improve yourself you obviously need to look at other artwork and try different styles I've tried watercolor, pastel, charcoal, sketching which you're going to see here today, computer art and my top three uh, favorite styles are definitely uh, number one is computer art because it's really quick to do. Uh, you can create some awesome stuff that you might that would take absolute maybe months to get on paper. Um, you can and then also my second favorite is sketching because it's very quick, simple, and you can get some good ideas down. And then of course watercolor. Watercolor, watercolor is more of a professional like for me um, because it really creates a good look for it. You might have your own. Um, likes um, if you're an artist and you're watching this video tell me your favorite um, artistic style your artistic medium what's your favorite do you like ink do you like watercolor do you like pastels um, do you like computer art and if so what kind of computer art do you like do you like starting from scratch animation or taking a photo and editing it um, there's another art medium photography do you like photography um, so I'll put those in the comments section I'd like to see you know what's sort of the more popular medium today Okay, so for today, this is going to be a tutorial video of how to upgrade your skills based on what I know. And originally, I was kind of nervous to do this because I was thinking, man, I'm, I'm only like a first year in university. I'm only 18. Should I really be um, speaking about art when I've already just started? I'm thinking, yeah, because I might have some skills that other people might not. You know, maybe you're in high school and you want to uh, improve your skills and you find my video. Um, Maybe, you know, my video will help you. Or maybe you're an older artist. Just hang on my Macintosh for a second there. Um, maybe you're old, or you're an older artist and you want to improve your skills a lot more. Or you're just still working on it. I don't, and, you know, and you find this. You might find something that you didn't know. Or you might learn a couple things. So, yeah. So that's my rationale right now. Um, and uh, I hope that I can teach you guys something. Uh, right now we're going to be dealing with sketching and most of this is going to be um, tones, values, and highlights. And a lot of the stuff I learned um, from my illustration teacher, I've already learned a whole bunch of great stuff which I will now pass on to you. And I also have my own experiences and my own um, technique that I will also be showcasing to you. And we're going to do that a little bit later on. I would love to showcase my true and tried wait scratch that reverse it tried and true technique um, I just want to also add that uh, my camera here it's a DSLR camera a Canon T3 Rebel and um, it only records like a certain amount of video at a time I think 14 minutes of video at a time so after like 14 minutes it'll stop so if you see any breaks in the video um, don't be alarmed but it doesn't matter because in the editing process I'll probably speed up some parts anyways. So um, yeah, that'll that'll be a thing in the video. So uh, here's the first stop while I um, get everything set up and make sure I have everything ready to go. Okay, so right now I have my um, art set up. 
Um, I have the size. I've already put. I always put my border on there. Always make sure you have a nice hard border. That's like what I always use. Some people like to use like a light border or even just cut out their paper. Um, I don't find that very helpful. I find if I have a little area to bleed, that really works. Especially if you're like working off the page like this and your um, like blend stick here, it'll go off the page. It'll scratch it a lot. And then once you actually go to blend it again, you'll get this very streaked look, and it, and maybe that that's the effect you're looking for. But for pure blending, it really like um, uh, it just doesn't look very good. And the same thing goes with your pencils. If you go off the page and you don't have enough room to bleed, then um, it'll go off the page, and then you might affect all these other pages. You might indent them, get some uh, pencil on them, and it really sucks if you're using color pencil or even inks. So always use a bigger piece of paper than you're going to need if you need to cut in the end so what that's just an extra step you're going to do so there's my first tip just to always have a little bit of area to bleed and give yourself a nice frame nice dark border and everything it's a little extra step but it's just um, something that'll improve the ergonomics of your project now what this is here this is an actual project I'm working on for university which is due Monday, which is probably the day this video will come out. So, um, let's hopefully I'll get an A on this. Um, for those of you who are going into art, into university, I'm personally in a graphic design program, but you still have to take art courses. So for those who are taking art courses in university, um, it varies per university. But what I find the general consensus is the homework load will be staggering. Because even though you only have one project, it'll take hours of work to do. But it is simple enough if you're passionate about art, if you are actual have actual talent and are skilled in it, then it'll fly by like nothing. You see all these students go in and they go, Oh man, art class is so hard. I had so many projects. Well, those students probably went out and like, maybe hung out with too many friends or partied a lot or maybe they didn't and maybe they just you know got distracted it's easy to do that you just have to find a work ethic that works for you and in the in the last two years um, I'm in a four-year program but in the last two years they'll really start to hand you in a lot of homework because those will be major projects and maybe even jobs so there's a little tip there for your future university students um, so you might not notice this on the camera but I'm starting on this section here. Well, you'll notice that part, but what you might not notice is I've laid a nice little um, light gray gradient on here. And that is so I do not work with pure white in the first step. Because if I start to work with pure white, then if I go into highlights and I just make them pure white, um, if you look, it, there's an image right here and it has a lot of white in it, but there's a lot of pure white, there's not an impure white, but it all, at blank, look, it looks white. So if I make everything pure white, then everything's going to have one tone, and it'll look flat, it won't look um, as three-dimensional, I would guess. So by laying down a layer like this, I have a nice gradient. It's not perfectly white, but it's as white as we can get. And then once we're done, we'll take an eraser, I have a kneadable eraser, really useful, you should pick one up. Um, I take an eraser and then I put in the highlights and those highlights will be very pure white and then those will really bring attention to them so there's my so there's another tip always and that's what I learned in my class always lay down a little light gradient like this Another thing I also wanted to say is work in sections. Okay, that's a very good point. Work in sections on your artwork. Select one area you want to work on first and really focus in that area. Because if you try to get the whole project done at once, you're not going to pay attention to detail to every single selection. Another thing I want to mention is um, always have some sort of photo reference. Okay, especially if you're starting from like a scratch or something. Because if you start from scratch, guaranteed, um, 8 out of 10 times you're gonna fail. Maybe those 2 out of 10 times you're wanting to start from scratch and you just have an idea and it works for you but 8 out of 10 times it's just not gonna work. Have some sort of photo reference to look at, some sort of style you want to emulate. Once you find your own style then you're gonna get a lot better but for beginning artists um, very, always have a photo reference until you start to figure out your own style 
and then you'll start to start you know draw from scratch and you'll learn a whole bunch of things and you'll be like putting down ideas and you'll love them maybe you hate them but most of the times you'll love them and um yeah so uh, enough jabbering on there let's actually um get down to art so what i'm doing here this is going this is an apple um basically i plopped an apple on the the, uh, the top sheet of my bed and then took a picture of it with a spotlight uh, right on top of it so right the light right here what the fuck's going on there um never mind the noise i'm in my dorm room right now so there's gonna be a little bit of ruckus and um so yeah i started out with a linear drawing so i basically drew my outline so it's basically going to be you know like starting sections and then, of course, I laid down my grade. I'm just going to start from right to left. I think that's just more comfortable with me. I read right to left, so I'm going to draw right to left. Okay, so um, first I started out with my pencils. Right here, I just have a professional pencil set. You can pick these up anywhere. Um, they vary in prices, but um, usually um, you can pick up a good set. Uh, really, all you have to do is just, you know, sort of, I don't know, just take a piece of paper and like maybe test them out or something but um, usually pencils are pretty good they're pencils pretty simple it's hard not to mess it up really all you want to look for is sort of what range of pencils you have you know can you go how far uh, into the H's does it go how far into the B's does it go um, this is a standard set that I got from my school so it was uh, part of an art kit so I got what I got well, I'll probably get some new pencils later. Like, as you can see, my B pencil is running out. So, when I started off, I started off with a 2H pencil. And I just laid down a quick gradient. Then I, I took my blendy stick. Um, when I buy blend sticks, I always buy two ones. One, one fat, one small, fat ones for a larger area, small one really gets to the details. So, and as I was doing this, I always go in an up and right motion to cover, like cover all the area, hold it on its side, you'll get the most out of it. And it'll actually be easier to blend. If you do it more like this, or like this, if you dare, this is kind of stupid. This, this is sort of a beginner's mistake. This, if you do it like this, it'll give you a nice even gradient and you'll get no points. It's basically your, if you ever worked with charcoal, it's basically that kind of effect. And it's way easier to blend. So then after that, I took my B pencil. Um, working with, uh, you know, Bs, HBs, uh, two Hs, they don't really vary in light and darkness, um, really. Um, you can get any sort of dark shade if you press hard enough. But, um... It is true that like the higher bees you go, the darker you get because those are a softer lead and they'll really let out more pigments and more graphite. Uh, the H's are really hard lead and they'll let out less graphite, graphite and less, you know, whatever. And so they'll give you a, a lot sharper, they're a lot uh, and a lot lighter tones. But really you can like, uh, if you do enough layers then you'll get a pretty dark color. Um, so. I just started out with my B. It's a, sort of just a standard pencil that I personally use, just a B pencil. And I really just put in my tones and shades. Now I'm going in layers. So right now, this is like the first layer and I'm gonna go here. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna go through and edit certain areas um, before I put in the tones and highlights. So this is basically the first step. Putting in basically your basic tones, basic highlight, no, basic, basic tones and values is what I'm trying to say. Start out, I'm gonna look at my image I'm just going to put in basic shading. Never use hard lines. Always use soft lines. Hard lines are basically only for the border and any actual hard lines that are in the image. But you never really want to work with them when you're dealing with shading. Hard lines are your worst enemy. Now I've got a very small area of shadow here, so I'm going to take my small blendy stick and blend it in right there. And there. Now, at a glance, it looks like a hard line. Really, it's not. In shading, there's no hard lines. There are basically um, differences between shades. And sometimes those differences can be very blended or they can be very sharp. Now, they can be sharp enough to make the illusion of a hard, crisp line, 
but there really isn't. It's just that the gradient or the blending from dark to light is just so minuscule you can't see it. Okay, so now on my picture I have a little bit of shading in here because this is where the stitching is, which is where the line is, so I'm going to put in some stitching. Uh, the little you know, creases that you see when you get stitching. So I'm going to start by doing in the first stitch here. And what I'm doing is I'm going very, very softly with my B pencil. This is the first layer. Do not press hard. Never press hard. And I'm just going to basically do just little wisps. And I'm going to go by line. I'm not going to go like like that, no. I'm going to go just very little lines here until I get the shading I want. I'm going to follow the path like that. Okay, so now i got a couple more lines right here. Now, to control the amount of gradient you get, um, basically is how far apart you put your little strokes. If you make them far apart when you blend them, you'll get a very white or very light shade. If you get them really close together, you'll get the full effect of your um, pencil. But then, when you start to hatchet shade, which some of you might already know, some of you might not, I'll show you later. When you start to hatchet shade, then you'll really get a very, very, like, dark shade, depending on your pencil. So right now I've laid down my lines. Now a lot of people I've talked to, they have problems with blendy sticks. And the real problem is they have is, they say, oh, they don't work, they're too weak. No, you just got to really put some effort into it. So if you're finding it hard to blend, press your thumb right here and then just really give it a good push. And that will give you very long, very tough gradient and that will smudge it out. Then also, work in the opposite direction of your strokes. You see that I was working like there. That's basically me just personally just laying down my gradient before I smudge it out. But um, for blending everything together, go in the opposite direction of your strokes. So if they're horizontal, you stroke vertical in this direction. Okay. Now for these ones right here, these are lines. Okay, so these are lines, um, and I need them to go up this way. So obviously I'm going to be going up, 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 up. I'm not going to be going in the opposite direction because I don't need them this much. But I will be going over them softly so they don't have any hard lines. Now I'm just going to go over this one, and this is a very light one, so I'm not going to put much pressure on it. And then I'm just going to spread it out a little bit. Okay, now we're done. I'm just going to go over it once with a quick swift, and that'll just lay like a blend. That'll get rid of any sort of um, high contrast colors. Because in my photo there, I, uh, there's not a lot of high contrast colors. Now I just need to blend in here. And now we're done that section right there. And we got this entire thing to go. So let's get started. So this will be sort of like those breaks I was talking about where I'm going to break and then speed up the footage. So enjoy some speed art. And I'll be back very soon.
Okay, so I'm going to start here now. And, um, yeah. So, right here, I'm going to have a really, really big gradient. So, which is why I'm going to start here for you guys. It's all for you. It's all for you. I'm just going to line up this up. So, I'm just going to start here. One mark. So, right here, I'm going to show you hatchet shading. Now, hatchet shading is a shading that a lot of illustrators use. Um, so it starts out um, like this. Some of you might know this technique already. I just ask that those people bear with me. Okay, so there's that. So now that's that'll create one gradient, but I need to go up from darker to lighter here. So I'm going to put down a slightly, just right here. It goes from dark to light in this direction. So as I get farther away, I'm going to start, you know, spreading out my um, areas further. So now I'm going to go this way because there's also a gradient in this direction. And it sort of covers a lot less of an area. Goes here. There. So I'm just going to shade that in. And I'm always going to start at the lighter area and make my way into the dark. Because if I spread the dark out, well, I'm going to spread the dark out and I want the light to come in. So always start when you're shading at the lightest area first and bring it into the dark. And then if you need to spread out the dark, then go from the dark out. So now you see I got a nice gradient there. And I'm just going to go in it again just to get in some areas. Okay, there we go. Now I'm just going to lay down my, now that I've done that, I'm just going to lay down some shading here so I don't work in perfect white. Okay, so uh, now let's get started on that part. That won't take long.
Okay, so there's one thing that I really need to stress to you guys. Do not work continuously. I've worked on my art for a while now. It's been like two hours. Don't continuously work. It does nothing but bad for you. Um, you'll start to feel angry at yourself that you haven't finished it yet. You'll become bored. Your body will become sore. So just take a break. Have a nutritious snack. And just do some stuff. You know? Anything you want. Play a video game. Watch some TV. Dance in your underwear. I don't know what you like to do. Hell, I might dance in my underwear. That sounds kind of fun. Open Gangnam Style! Gangnam Style! Op, 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 op. Open Gangnam Style! Let's um, uh, <clears throat> let's uh, forget that ever happening. Uh, um, get back to you know work, but that's an important lesson. Um, take a break once in a while. Have some fun. Okay, so um, after that break, we are now going to finish off this last bit here, and then we're going to start on the apple. Hopefully, we'll get this done in around under 20 minutes. We probably already gone over the minute right now if my editing skills are up to par. Um, and if not, well, it's been a long and treacherous journey and um, I uh, thank you for staying with me. And uh, don't worry, the next steps will be coming up soon once I finish this all up, so enjoy some more speed art, which should be like, I don't know, a minute or so. Okay, now that we're finished that, I'm going to show you a tip on how to make fabric look more fabric-y. Oh, hang on, I'm just going to blend a little better here. Got a little too fast, carried away. Um, this is how, I'm going to show you a little trick about a blend a little, uh, not blend a little, God damn it. Put more texture into the fabric. Because this, around here, this is fabric. And fabric, as you know, is made out of fibers. And in the picture, you can, if you look closely, you can see little individual fibers. So, to make it look a little more like fabric, what you do is you take a 2H pencil, like this, okay? Look at your picture and look at where the, like, you'll see little faded lines of where the fabric is. Now, the lightest touch on the side, using this, I showed you earlier, just run it down and make little nice little shades. Like here, we got some heavy shading here with the fabric. So I'm going to run it from here. Okay, and then we got the same thing here. So Only do it when you can really, really see them. Oh shit, that's that's too 
to break. See, now it's really starting to look like fabric. Okay, so now we got some more down here. Hold more up here. Okay, so I'm just keeping putting in those fabrics. Those little fibers make fabric fabric. Put them in the areas where you can see them on your actual picture. Don't assume where they are. Because if, if it's not seen in the photograph, don't put it in there. Okay? If you can't see it in real life, don't put it on there. Okay? Now we got some fibers coming down this way. But the, on, and if you, I notice here that there's a lot lighter. So I'm just going to go very, very light. Okay? But in here, I can really see them. So I'm just going to do this. Now, of course, I'm just going to quickly with blank plenty stiff and just smooth it all out. Okay. So now if you look at it, it looks quite a bit more like fabric. Well, you can't, you may not see it very well on the screen here, but it looks a lot more like fabric. And if you do that, take it very lightly. And then in some areas, if like I go here and maybe just blend it in a little bit, It'll really give the look of fibers interwoven to make the fabric. Okay, so now we're going to work on the apple. Now that's going to be a real bitch to handle because of all the spots over here. So, now, what I'm going to do on my computer screen here, if you're working on a computer screen, I'm going to zoom in. So I'm going to just go command plus, 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 plus. Okay, now I can see all the little intricate pieces of it. The fabric, it's no big deal to me. The fabric's really not my biggest concern. The biggest concern for me is my apple. So, now let's uh, start on this. So, it's pretty dark, but I'm still going to start with a single tone. So I'm going to give it like a uh, 3B, because it's freaking dark. But 3B won't be so dark to mess it up. Okay, so now that I've finished the apple, I've finished putting down all the layers, and now I'm going to start putting in the darkest layers. So I'm going to be really highlighting all the darkest layers on the fabric. 
Then I'm going to be putting down the uh, brightest layers, like putting in the highlights, both on the apple and on the the on the fabric. So uh, once that's done, I'll show you guys the final product. And I hope that and right now, if you want to leave right now, you can, because I'm assuming this is a pretty long video. This is a long video tutorial. Now. I just want you to remember my tips. Let's just go over what I've said. First of all, start off with enough room to bleed. Second of all, always work in layers. Get comfortable, like, have all your supplies ready. Uh, never work with pure whites or pure blacks to start off with. Wait till the very end, that way you'll get a full tonal value. As you can see, the apple really pops out from the fabric. And it sort of looks like a 3D image. And, um... Anything else, I'm pretty sure is in the video. But those are the main points that I want to give to you guys. And I hope that you've taken something away from this. And I hope that you enjoyed watching me work. Uh, I want to do more of these. Hopefully they'll be a lot shorter. This one just took a while because this is like a really big major project. This is realism. Realism takes a while. And remember to put a comment in the video about what's your favorite artistic medium. Is it watercolor? Is it drawing? Is it computer art? What is it? So I uh, thank you for watching and um, now let's get to that uh, finished product.